Y'all pray for me this morning. I'm going to try to sing, uh, Thank You, Lord. Okay? <laughs> Some thank the Lord for friends and home, for mercy sure and sweet. But I would praise Him for His grace. In prayer I would repeat, thank you, Lord. For saving my soul, thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation, so rich and free. Some thank Him for the flowers that grow, and for the stars that shine. My heart is filled with joy and praise because I know He's mine. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul thank you lord for making me whole thank you lord for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free I trust in Him from day to day. I prove His saving grace. I'll sing this song of praise to Him until I see His face. Join me. Thank you, Lord. For saving my soul, thank you, Lord. Making me whole, thank you, Lord. For giving to me thy great salvation, so rich and free. Amen. I'm excited for a brand new sermon series that we're starting uh, this morning. Christ's Messenger, A Living Letter. We're going to be reading from Matthew, the ninth chapter and the 10th chapter. Um, just uh, as we get started this morning, if, if you guys are, if you're helping with serving the meal after the service, if you'll please stay put until uh, the altar call and at the very end, uh, then you could go. We're not in that big of a hurry to get out there and get food, all right? And so with the food will wait on us. We don't want to disturb anybody that the, as the Holy Spirit speaks. So just wait to the very end, please. And then when we dismiss, you can go and we'll wait for you, all right? Um, so when we take a look at this morning, in this morning's lesson, I want you to imagine with me that you're a traveler in a foreign land and you're, you're lost in unfamiliar streets. This last year, this when Carol and I went to Italy this last year, beautiful sights, not a single soul seems like spoke English there. And so I can relate very, very well to this story. So if you're a traveler in a foreign land like Italy and no one speaks English, and you're looking there, standing there like we were in the middle of uh, the square trying to look as to where we needed to go, you have your little map that you got at the hotel and those kind of things. And, and uh, then you, as you're sitting there looking for things, Imagine suddenly out of the crowd emerges a, a, a kind-hearted local person with a warm smile and they approach you and 
despite the language barrier, they gesture for you to follow them because they see what you're looking at on the map. And so they gesture for you to follow them. And with unwavering trust, you do so. And they lead you safely to the destination that you were looking for in the first place. In this scenario, ladies and gentlemen, this the compassionate local is much like messengers of Christ. They're not always the one with, with the grandiose speeches, with the eloquent words, but they're the ones who, um, that embody Christ's love, Christ's compassion with our actions. Christ's messengers are not confined to pulpits, Sunday school classes, or on the pages of Scripture. They're not, they're not confined to that. As a matter of fact, compassionate Christians... Christian messengers are found in everyday encounters. Christians, we're called to go to the people, to help people, to help people learn what they don't know. They don't know because no one's told them. Uh, that's where you and I come in. This, as this sermon series goes along, I want you to pray and see where God is going to lead you in this and how God can speak to you because there's a lost world out there that needs Christians to go out and to talk to them. Whether that be that lost world, may be your neighbor, may it be your family, it may be uh, uh, being a missionary, it may be being an extended arm of the missionary, it could do all kinds of things, but we need to pray to see where God's going to lead us because there's a lost world outside a urinized doorstep that needs people to talk to them about the love the mercy, the grace of Jesus Christ. So let's, let's pray before we do anything else. Lord Jesus, I pray God through this, Lord, as we open up your word that you'd speak to our hearts. You had compassion upon the people, Father, and let us to have compassion upon our fellow man. Let us be burdened to go out and to be your hands and feet in this world. Not just keep the Christianity to ourselves, not just be a Christian inside this church house, not just be a Christian in our homes, but be a Christian in the real world. Father, I pray, Lord Jesus, for those divine appointments, Lord, that you'd, you'd have us, Father, grow in our faith and grow in our Christian walk as a result of this, Father. I trust you, Lord. Amen. Open up your Bibles, will you please, to Matthew, the ninth chapter. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Down about verse 35 is where we're going to start at this morning. Matthew 9, verse 35. I'm reading for the Christian Standard Bible this morning. It says this in Matthew, the ninth chapter, verse 35. Jesus, continuing going around, continued going around to all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he felt compassion, or he had compassion for them. Because they were distressed and dejected like sheep without a shepherd. Ladies and gentlemen, the mission of Jesus Christ was to mission, uh, to minister. Jesus Christ went to the people. He didn't just sit back and wait for the people to, to come to him. We, to be honest with you, are foolish to, to, to sit back and think and wait for people to come to us. Because people don't know what to ask for. There's a world that's falling apart before our very eyes, right in front of our very doorstep, but people don't know what to ask for. And if we don't go to them, they're not gonna come to us and say, what can we, we do? I, 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 something that really is in my peeve of mine is, is people say to, uh, to, uh, that I've heard over and over and over again, well, if I live my life like a Christian, then they will get saved. You put, raise your hand in here if you just looked at somebody else and you were around them and they never told you anything about Jesus, but you said they lived like a Christian and therefore I got saved. Anybody in here? 
You could go around the whole wide world and I bet that you wouldn't have anybody raise their hand. But you've heard that as well as I have. Is if I just act like a Christian, then people will get saved. Where does it say that at? Does it say that in Scripture? Quite the contrary. You and I are called. We are sent. We have to have a, a call to action. We have to go and do something we have to go out just like Jesus did. You see, we read hidden scripture. That Jesus Christ, he went out. He just didn't sit back and go, okay, I'm the Messiah. You guys all just come to me and I'm just going to stay here. Didn't do that. Jesus Christ went out into the world. He just didn't hang out around his people, but he empowered his people. We're going to get to that later on. But he went out and he went to the world. He went out and it said that he healed people. He was amongst people. He taught them. He had compassion upon them. And somehow, for some reason, we start off, when we start off as a Christian and we, we go through different things and we may go through a different revival stage or we've gone and if there's, we've maybe seen some video or some movie that really moved us and then it's like, I'm going to just be really compassionate and then we get into the calloused phase. Let's be real. Every single one of us. And then we really, we, we, something would spur us on and a song that we listen to or, or a movie or something where maybe we had some kind of speaker that just really just, really just touched my heart and, and something that took place in your life. And it's like, okay, now I'm going to start talking about Christ again. Now I'm going to be diligent, intentional in talking about Christ again. And then that fades away and you can become calloused again. It's like this, you know, around Christmas time. Around Christmas time, I don't know what it is, but people think that people only eat around Christmas time. Yeah. True story. Christmas time, that's when we, oh, well, let's go feed people around Christmas time, right? Thanksgiving and Christmas. Look, people are hungry throughout the year. That we see something on television or we feel compassion or whatever, and then what, what happens after that? So look, when we read this in Scripture, when I read Matthew 36 through 38 here, it should grip you. It should, it should really, really touch your heart because Jesus Christ, when he went out to the land, to the area, to the people, he went forth and he had compassion on them. He was teaching them. He told them about himself. If there's anybody that could have sent back and just said, hey, you need to know me. I don't need to know you. It could have been Jesus, but that's not what he did. He went forth and he said, look, you need me. You need direction. You need guidance. You need wisdom. You need this. You need this. Do this. And everything that you need is found in me, Jesus says. Everything that we need is found in Christ. You know that. You're a believer. You know that. That why do we keep that to ourselves? Why are we not more diligent more active being the hands and feet of Jesus. I'm talking about Bethel Baptist Church. I'm talking about the body of Christ around the world. At one time, it seems like that we were a lot more active than we were as a body of Christ. But now, where are we at? Well, we can kind of do some self-analyzation for that. Jesus Christ here in Scripture, he went around to the towns and the villages, it says in verse 35, and he went and taught in their synagogues. He was preaching the good news of the kingdom that is going to come. He healed the diseases and the, the sicknesses, and he saw the crowds, and, and he here, he quotes Ezekiel. He quotes the Old Testament. He says, these people are like sheep without a shepherd. Now, again, ladies and gentlemen, whenever we take a look at this in, in Scripture, we need to understand that when he had that compassion for them, if we don't go out and talk to them, they're not going to know. They're not going to know what to ask for. Look, it's like this. If you, if you started something brand new or if, if you, uh, you could go into a different job. Let's say, that, let's say that tomorrow morning you start a brand new job, brand spanking new job that you had absolutely no experience in whatsoever. I'll pick one. Electrical engineering. I don't know anything about that. Nothing about that. All I know is if I touch it, I will die. All right? That's my recollection. Sorry. Sorry, James. 
electrical engineer over here. But what I'm getting at is if, if, I, if tomorrow morning, if I started that job, I wouldn't know anything about it, and I wouldn't know what questions to ask. I wouldn't know anything about it. And if I didn't go, I, it's not, if I was going to be in that situation, if someone didn't tell me, I would never, ever know. I could sit around electrical engineers, but if I didn't absorb that, if I did not know what questions to ask, if, if an electrical engineer didn't teach me, then I would be ignorant to electrical engineering. I'm a, degreed, I'm a degreed professional. I have several different degrees. If I did not get, be learned in, in that degree, if I did not, was not taught in that, then I would have not a clue. People in this world, the same exact thing. They don't know that they are sinners in need of a savior. They don't know how good Jesus Christ is. As a matter of fact, we're going to get this a little bit later on. They understand the cultural Christianity and there's huge, huge problems in learning cultural Christianity. We'll get to that here in a moment. So ladies and gentlemen, we must be Christ's messenger, a living letter, because you and I are living letters for Christ. We must go out and speak to the people. This very same method is not new. It was given to, to, to the disciples and to all of us in the called the Great Commission, Matthew 28, uh, 19 and 20. Uh, if you were an RA when you were a young child, a young boy, you know this. Uh, go ye therefore in all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all the things that I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always into the end of the age. That's the RA pledge back from in the day. But that's exactly what the Great Commission says, to go out and make disciples. Go out and teach. Go out. It doesn't just say just sit and sulk. Go out. Jesus Christ went out. You and I are to go out. We must go to the people. Let's be honest. I think the very reason that we don't go out to people is because we have lost compassion for people. I think in today's world, Christians are far more passionate about politics, far more passionate about culture or social media or news or the approval of others. You name it. We are more passionate about other things than we are about being passionate about being the hands and feet of Jesus. We could talk to you about any number of things in this world. We could talk about politics till we're, we're red in the face. You see, you, somebody are catching the point I'm talking about on that. <laughs> but some of us are more passionate about being that red politic than we are being passionate about Christ. That's a problem. When we know more about sports or about culture or about being accepted, about when we know more about political happenings, when we know more about different things, when we know more about that than we're concerned about being the hands and feet of Jesus, then we got it all wrong. We got it wrong. And it seems like, and you could look at the same world you and I live in, it seems like that we're more passionate about these other things than we are passionate about sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, I believe, again, that we have lost compassion for people. How do we have compassion for people? We build one another up. We edify our fellow believers, our fellow Christians. How do we have compassion for other people? We, we go out and we share with people. We talk about Jesus. There's all kinds of ways for you and I to do that. You don't have to do it one way or the other. Sometimes I remember back in the day whenever I was trying to, wanting to talk about Jesus and, and, and I went to, when I was a young boy, as a young teenage boy, I went to a, a pastor and a pastor told me, he says, well, he gave me the Romans Road. And I read that and it's a wonderful witnessing program, but I look, I couldn't memorize all those scriptures. Be honest with you. Probably could, I just probably didn't put enough effort into it. But then I thought, well, um, I may not know what to say. Or what if I get into the situation where I, I sound dumb? Look, you and I go through the same emotions. But then what about this? 
is it more important for me, might, might not to have all the answers and maybe to be to sound dumb, if you will, or is it, might be, is it more important for me to kind of feel awkward or uncomfortable? Is that more important than somebody possibly dying and going to hell? Absolutely not. And so what must we do? We must just go forth and just be exactly what Christ says, to go out and be disciples. Disciples. Well, we're going to talk about discipleship here in a bit. There's different, uh, there's different stages for us to do that. But Christ calls us to be disciples. We must go out and, and be compassionate for people. I did a sermon series a couple of years ago on love God, love people. Jim Elliott. Some of you guys may know Jim Elliott. If you've ever seen the end of the spear, hey, the connection from my last sermon series. If Jim Elliott uh, literally was at the end of the spear, Jim Elliott was a martyr, uh, and there was a movie made about his life. Um, uh, Nick Saint and Jim Elliott. Jim Elliott, they were both missionaries to Peru. Uh, but Jim Elliott, is, he was a missionary martyr, got killed for his belief. He went to the Awaka Indians in Peru. And he lamented on the fact that there were so few willing to go into the mission field in his, in his own day that he said, quote, our young men are going into their, uh, our young men aren't going into the other fields because they don't feel uh, the call to the mission field. We don't need a call. We need a kick in the pants. End quote from Jim Elliott, a missionary that gave his life for Christ. This is a man that, that felt so much compassion for people, a people group, the Awaka Indians that in, in Peru that have never been, been a part of any civilization back then, that, that he and, and, and uh, Jim, Nick Saint, as they, they flew over there, they were amateur pilots and, and those kind of things. And if you want to watch that movie, it is phenomenal. I showed it here at the church uh, many, many years ago. Uh, but it, it, how they took the message of Jesus Christ and they went there and then something spooked the, the, the natives and they wind up they wound up uh, killing him and his, his missionary partner their families went back and finished the job their families even after their death still had compassion upon the natives and went and finished the job they went back to share the love of Jesus Christ and I had the opportunity I had the opportunity to, uh, to, to hear the, the man that actually took Jim Saint's life. I heard him speak in Lubbock. And he spoke at a Christian concert, Stephen Curtis Chapman. And when he spoke at this concert, uh, Jim, Jim Elliott's son actually came out and introduced him and they called him grandpa you see the man that took his daddy's life he led to the Lord Jesus Christ and this man that, that now that uh, uh, had remorse and repented of his that sin and then now was a village leader and is now leading other people to Christ there or how was in that Peru Peruvian area a life changed because one man had the courage, two men had the courage to go out and share their faith. And many of us won't even share our faith when we see somebody come in contact with when you're standing in line at Walmart for eight hours. <laughs> True story. True story. We see people that we haven't seen in a long, long time and you say, hey, how are you doing? Maybe you haven't seen them in church in a long, long time. Hey, how are you doing? And you may talk and just make small talk with them. You may talk about politics. You may talk about sports. You may talk about the culture that we live in or the news or something like that. But what about the most important thing in our lives? It's not politics or sports. It's not the news. Not current events. Unfortunately for some of us that is the most important thing in our lives. 
the most important thing in our lives should point to the most important one. Jesus the Christ. As followers of Christ, our lives should be on the table before the Lord. Whenever he says go, we go. None of us are intended to simply get saved and then just coast by in life, just waiting on heaven to, to welcome us in. That's not how that works. We just don't get saved and then it's like, okay, just hit the cruise control. Life's good. Take your hands off the wheel. Everything is fantastic. Just cruise on through life. That is not the way God intended us to do that. God intended us to multiply and that only happens when we go forth and we speak. We talk to people about the love of Jesus, the expectations of Jesus. And yes, we need to know about both, the expectations and the love of Jesus. We must be Christ's messenger, a living letter. We have to have compassion for people. Let's continue on here. Matthew, the ninth chapter, uh, again here, uh, skipping down here to, to verse 37. Uh, 30, 35 and 36 is Jesus continued going around to the town's villages and talking in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were distressed and dejected like sheep without a shepherd. Verse 37. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is abundant, but the workers are few. Therefore, verse 38, very, very important. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into the harvest. Did you see what verse 38 says here? Let's key in on this again. It says to pray. Pray. I want you to notice here in Scripture, it didn't say, hey, hop up and go right now. It says no. It says go. It says pray. Instead, here he is. It, 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 he didn't say, hey, instead, here's the harvest. Go, go, go. He says pray. Jesus eventually will get to the, the, the go part, but his followers Believers must be on our knees asking and pleading with God to send out the workers. This is precisely what we should be doing in our church as we seek to, to send out, uh, to seek opportunities for us to, to seek out and send out people, us, into this dark world to proclaim the gospel. Many believers don't even consider the possibility that God could even call them to proclaim the gospel. But we're to pray. And when we pray, God will send us out in different ways, in different ways, in different places. Pray that God would send you wherever he needs you. Let me say that again. Pray that God would send you wherever he needs you. Could be your families, your neighbors, your workplace, your travels. For some of us, it, it may mean that we may be going in different areas. Some of us may need to become missionaries either in America or overseas. Some of us need to be missionaries in our own home place. As a matter of fact, all of us need to do that. Jim Elliott continues on here. Quote, this is in his diary that he wrote. Quote, today I noticed for the first time that Jesus' compassion on the multitudes was not only because they were many, but because they were scattered, divided, and distressed. So it is among our tribes, the Awaka Indians, they're scattered, but not many, yet they merit his mercy. This God conforms uh, my way with these encouragements from his word. End quote. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I are called to be sent. We're called to be sent. What we're going to read, uh, get into here pretty soon is who he sent. He sent those that he trained, that he equipped, and those kind of things. And we're going to talk about what that means. 
But we need to first prepare our hearts and understand that we too are called to be sent. Whether you are sent to your neighbor's house, whether you're sent to talk to your family, your friends, whether you're sent to talking to a stranger somewhere, whether you have that divine appointment, whatever, you're sent, you are called, you are to go out and be part of God's great commission. You and I are called to do that. But we must look for intentional opportunities to do so. Too many of us sit on our hands and knees and go, well, did you talk to anybody about Jesus this week? No, I didn't see anybody. Dude, you're around 300 people. You didn't see anybody? So understand, ladies and gentlemen, and not everyone that you come in contact with, God is telling you to talk to. If you're around 300 people, not God's probably not talking to you. May he might be, but he's probably not talking to, telling you to talk, speak to L300. But I guarantee you, as you talk to people or you look for people and you pray and you talk to God, the Holy Spirit will quicken your heart and say, "This is the one. This is the one." There's so many times where on a, I love on a plane, on a plane, I love to, whoever sits next to me, I tell them, it's a captive audi- audience. They ain't going anywhere. They're going to hear about Jesus. They're right next to me, right? So, see, and sometimes when Carol and I travel, for whatever reason, our, you know, our, our seats are not together. So, like, look, I got two opportunities here. But nevertheless, ladies and gentlemen, look, you got to be, intel- you gotta be intentional, and as whenever we, ever, whenever we fly southwest and Carol and I are sitting here together and I'm looking, I'm like, and I'm praying, Lord, would you place somebody here that you need to, Lord, Lord? And it's like, not that one, not that one, not that one. And I can't tell you how many times that God's like that one and that person sit right there. That happens a lot because you're inten- I'm intentional. You need to be the same exact way. Look, it's not up, as I said earlier, it's not up to your pastor or your Sunday school teachers or your deacons to do everything like that. It's up, we are to do that, but you're to do that as well. We're all called to be the body of Christ, to be the hands and feet of Jesus. You need to share the gospel and know how to, to share your faith with others just as much as anybody else. So don't do this. So-and-so Pastor Jimmy, can you share the gospel with so-and-so? That's awesome, but you can do that, right? You can do that. Why? Because if God's changed your life, all you have to do is just say that. This is what God has done for me, and God could do that to you for you too. You don't have to be the most studied person in the world to be able to speak on behalf of God. Why? Because the Holy Spirit speaks. We just got to be obedient to the call. This morning, let's stand. As we begin this sermon series, I want you to pray. Pray and ask God. who he needs you to talk to, where he needs you to be. And as long as you're breathing upon this earth, there's divine appointments for you. God still has a plan for you or he'd have taken you home by now. You may think, I'm too old. I can't, I can't look. Again, as long as you have breath, you need to praise the Lord. If God was done with you, he would have taken you out of here. But God's not finished with you yet. There's still divine appointments that you got to make. So pray and ask God for those to show you those, to reveal those to you, to, to have those opportunities for you to witness. To be able to not only witness, but to encourage, to love, to to help bless, to help nurture, to help grow your, your fellow Christian. And to go out and just show love into a dark world. Look, we don't have to go out and beat people over the head with the Bible. That's not going to win anybody to heaven. But what we can do is just tell them what God's done for you. 
Pray as God, as we start the sermon series, pray that for God to increase your territory as the prayer of Jabez is. To show you where you need to go. If you're here this morning and you have never trusted your life with Jesus, let today be that day. The altar is open for you to pray, whatever God's laid, laid upon your heart. Or I will pray with you. You be obedient to God this morning as we sing.